Before entering any substation you must call the appropriate control center. Proceed out the door to begin the next part of training. You can skip this portion of the tutorial next time by going straight out the door. Welcome to the substation training module. We'll be going inside a virtual site and teaching you the essentials to work in a real substation. Start by moving to the gate entrance. Check that all grounding straps are secured. Check for unauthorized entry. Do not enter the substation if any signs of unauthorized entrance occurs, and immediately call the appropriate energy control center. Unlock and open the gate. Proceed into the substation. Be sure to maintain safe distance to equipment at all time. Ensure the gate is relocked to prevent unauthorized entry. Look around for any signs of animals inside the substation. Diagrams will appear throughout the experience. You can tap on these diagrams to zoom in. Proceed to the next marked zone. Overhead AC power lines transmit high voltage to help reduce energy over long distances. The higher the voltage, the lower the current. The lower the current, the lower the resistance losses in the conductors. And when resistance losses are low, energy losses are low also. Proceed to the next marked zone. Transmission lines are connected at this interconnection. It also has measurement devices called PTs. We will visit this a little later in the tour. Power is distributed both ways on the bus so that if one breaker is out of service, the circuit can still stay energized. The bus control building contains equipment for metering, measurement of voltage and current, and communications via telephone. Incoming distribution line connects at this gang-operated air brake disconnect. The purpose of this switch is to isolate breakers or the bus from the incoming transmission line. High voltage circuit breakers can be designed with a set of contacts immersed in a tank filled with insulating oil or SF6 gas. When activated, the contacts open or close, thereby allowing current to flow or stop flowing. The insulating oil or gas serves to quench the arc generated by the opening of the contacts. Multiple air disconnect switches allow isolation of equipment such as breakers and transformers. With both disconnects open, the breakers can be isolated for maintenance or replacement without denergizing remaining circuits. Proceed to the next marked zone. Current transformers, also known as CTs, are used to measure alternating current. Potential transformers, or PTs, also measure an aspect of power supply. But while CTs measure current, PTs measure voltage. Both reduce the high voltage and current to an amount that can be recorded by instrumentation. The remote box allows the air disconnect to be operated remotely by a mechanical device. 
This branch off feeds two different substations after 5 miles of transmission line. Proceed to the next marked zone. The distribution power transformers perform the necessary voltage transition from transmission, or sub-transmission, voltage level to a level suitable for power distribution. Transformers have two windings, being the primary winding and the secondary winding. The primary winding is the coil that draws power from the source. The secondary winding is the coil that delivers the energy at the transformed or changed voltage to the load. Usually, these two coils are subdivided into several coils in order to reduce the creation of flux. This set of air disconnects allows isolation of the 115 kV transformer. This line continues on to feed two smaller substation. Proceed to the next marked zone. Bus bars feed into control house and connect to feeder breakers. Proceed to the next marked zone. Cap switches can be manually used to isolate capacitor banks from bus. Capacitors are used to control the level of the voltage supplied to the line by reducing or eliminating the voltage drop in the system caused by inductive reactive loads. Proceed to the next marked zone. Grounding transformers are used to provide a ground path to either an ungrounded Y or a delta connected system. Grounding transformers are typically used to 1. Provide a relatively low impedance path to ground, thereby maintaining the system neutral at or near ground potential. 2. Limit the magnitude of transient over voltages when restriking ground faults occur. 3. Provide a source of ground fault current during line to ground faults. 4. Permit the connection of phase to neutral loads when desired. Proceed to the next marked zone. The underground connection points back to the building. These switches are if you have to work on this capacitor bank system. You can close these switches manually and it will ground out your capacitor banks and the frame. That concludes the VR substation experience. Feel free to continue looking around, or return back to the gate entrance to finish. Exit the substation and securely lock the gate.